I'd like to do a final demo, and uh, I will ask our friend Ian to do that. I will do it myself next time, I promise. Uh, this one is a little complicated, and that's why I needed real brains to do it for me, <laughs> uh, because it actually shows how all these layers come together in one scenario. Ian. Thank you very much. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As the birthday boy has told us, these are our three levels that we're currently looking at. And what we'd like to do now is show you an example from a real company about how they actually implemented this core business, the in innovative extensions, and finally the reach. In order to do that, the industry that they came from was the aerospace industry, so I'd like you to imagine for a minute that I am an aircraft mechanic. A little bit of a frightening thought, granted. Anyway, what this company did is that they have obviously regulated, they need compliance, everything was in the back end. So, for example, every time a mechanic would take out and check out a tool, they would have to go into the system and have a look at the status of that tool. And all of the tools are stored in the back end. If we switch to PC number two, you can see here the type of screen they were using. For example, they were looking at a particular equipment number. And if I go in here, I can see that the tool I'm looking at here is a circular saw. And currently, it is in the crib where all of the tools are stored. You see the word crib here. Now, what they decided to do is they decided to extend that and put innovations on it. They didn't want the users logging in all of the time and checking out the tools. What they did is they innovated by that extension, that middle layer, and they put in a sensor network. And I happen to have a sensor here. Now all I need is a tool. And if you're wondering what this secret black curtain at the back here is, it is, ready for this, ta-da, a tool crib. And inside the tool crib, I have tools. Now, you can see what's happened if we switch to PC number two. Oh, it's number one, sorry. If you see on PC number one, we see a view of what's actually happening now. Thanks to the sensor, I've now moved away from the tool crib. I'm now moving into the work cell. And you can see, thanks to the little sensor, here I am. So I'm going to pick out my tool, my circular saw, my favorite tool, and I'm going to walk back to the area where I'm going to do the work. And you can see here, the system realizes and moves me over here. I can use the tool without any problem. Broom, broom. Okay. And if we go back into PC number one, you can see that the SAP backend has been updated, and it's now telling me the system and the tool, the circular saw, is in use. And it's only in use because, if I click on here, I am the authorized and a person who can use it. Again, all of this is stored in the back end. Again, we're coming back to what Jim was talking about, this stable back end. Everything is in there. Now, if we switch back to PC number one, please, I'm going to carry on using my tool, doing all sorts of work. Broom, broom. PC number one, please. PC number one. That's the other one. Yes. There we go. Now, unfortunately, it stopped working. That's not good in a keynote demo, is it? But if you've noticed, actually, on this screen, next to the tool here, there is a little symbol here with a little, uh, little cogs in there. Now, what does that mean? It means that this tool, which also has a sensor in it, is aware of its surrounding, it's aware of how much it's being used, and it sent information back to the sensor network to say, I'm not going to work anymore now because the tool needs to be calibrated. And instantly, in the back end, a work order is created for the tool to be calibrated by a mechanic. Okay? Clever stuff. I can show you, the, tool, I can show you the, the actual tool in the back end. If I go here into the PC number two, we can see that that work order has actually been created. If I go in here and search for any work orders that have been created today, so let's have a look. Created, it's an SAP system joy to use. Here I am, SAP system uh, that's created today, 2009, and I want to have a look at any work orders that have been created. I execute that. And what I can see here is that these are the work orders that are currently inside the system. And the system just whirls away in the beautiful way it does with an SAP. And it will then display the work order that has just been created. Well, OK. But anyway. 
obviously, at some point, you don't always want the people to log into the SAP system. We want to talk about that concept of reach that Jim was also talking about. So what we decided to do, and what the company did, is they first looked, obviously, we've seen how wonderful the SAP portal looks, but they actually outsourced all of the maintenance to a third-party company that were using an iGoogle portal. Okay? So what I'm going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is show you actually what that iGoogle portal looks like. And if I switch down here to the iGoogle portal, this is the portal that we actually created. Now, what we're doing here now is this is the company that maintains the different source. So what would happen now is that work order should at least appear inside their iGoogle application here. So what I'm going to do here is click on Refresh, and the system goes away and refreshes, and you can see, ha, oh, <laughs> there it is. It was created in the back end. You can see that order 5005517 was created in the back end. So that's the order now in order that we need to do to repair this machine, okay? So what we've done now, we've seen the three layers. We've seen firstly the, the layer, everything's in the back end. We've seen the innovation thanks to the sensor network. We've seen the reach going out to an iGoogle. Or alternatively, I can actually show all of that functionality here on my iPhone. And if we switch now to the iPhone, those one, two, six different, uh, six different, uh, perhaps if I uh, focus this properly, that'll be a better idea. Here we go, we'll just zoom in. Here we go. We'll just zoom into the iPhone, there it is. Whee! Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is start up the SAP application here, and you can see those work orders are now then listed here inside the SAP application. And what I can do then is from the application itself is actually tell the system, and here's that work order. It was created at 1.36 Palo Alto time, which if you look at your watches was just two minutes ago. It is live. Recalibrate the circular saw. I now recalibrate the circular saw. I go into that order. I click here. There it is. All I need to do is go in here to do the recalibration, to say the recalibration has now been done. I enter the number of hours that I was working on that. I say that was done. I do the final confirmation. I flick on yes, and then all I need to do is save that. And now that is saved into the SAP backend. It's gone back into the SAP backend. And if we switch to PC number one again, please, now, it's been saved, the confirmation. And if I switch back to PC number one, if I do a refresh here now, the system will go back in here, and it will then take out that order. And hey, presto, the signal will be sent, and my circular saw is happy again. Now all I need to do as an aircraft manufacturer is actually start working on my aircraft. <laughs> ah, who cares? Anyway, so what we've seen now, ladies and gentlemen, are those three levels that Jim was talking about. We've seen that bottom layer. All of the orders, all of the equipment is stored in the SAP system. You have the compliance, the accountability. Everything is available in there. That back end that Jim was talking about that's necessary. We've extended it while the innovations of the sensor network. We've used the sensor network to make the work so much easier for the people. We've extended the reach through iGoogle and the iPhone. And if you're wondering, that was really neat with the iPhone and iGoogle application. Can I do that? Well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, you certainly can. If you switch to PC number two now, if you go to SDN and you simply type in micro applications at the top here in the help, micro, if I can spell it, it would help if I can micro application, and you search for it in the SDN, what will happen is the first thing that comes up is a PDF, which is a complete description, we loaded it up yesterday, of how we created those applications, so you too can very easily be up and running. So we've seen that, the three levels of the orchestration. With that, I'd like to say thank you very much and hand back to the birthday boy. Thank you.